Six-year-old Carter, a student at Redemptress, likes his hair just how it is. And that's the hair that he's comfortable with. He wears it natural, curly. But after his mom got a text from the school principal saying hair like this might not be allowed, she's offended. You're telling me I have to cut my son's hair because of whatever look that you're sick of seeing that's getting out of hand. The text went to all parents. It reads, quote, the nappy, uncombed, unmaintained, picked, sponge look must go. And if their haircut is higher than one inch, it must be cut. It all started after Kyra Johnson delivered a package on Tuesday at this Sagona True Value hardware store. She noticed the sky changing colors and a tornado was headed her way. In the video, you see she tries to get inside of the store, but the doors were automatically shut. I just braced myself right between the soda machine, and I guess the door could have been a little further up, but just like this. But eventually, the soda machine fell to the ground. I said, God, what do I do? What do I do? And I heard the door just bamming, so I grabbed onto the door, and that's where I was standing until it finally stopped. Today, it was an emotional moment as many of the workers greeted Johnson with hugs after seeing the video. There's nothing else I can say about it. I, I thank God I'm here. Sorry. This piece of crime tape is the only sign that something terrible happened at this I-10 underpass in Sorrento. Around 2 o'clock in the morning, 36-year-old Shanrika Dejwa of Gonzales was shot while in her car, her baby with her. The coward took his gun and shot her and killed her, uh, where well, she subsequently died. The baby, their common baby, 10-month-old, was in the back seat of the car. Her fiancé and father of her baby, 26-year-old Jarvis McNair, also of Gonzales, was arrested for Dejois's murder. She was shot in the mouth and died at the hospital. Sheriff Jeffrey Wiley says McNair was following his fiancé in his car when, for some reason, she stopped at the intersection and that's when he got out of his car and shot the mother of his child. No more motive than any other coward might have that uh, stalks uh, uh, weaker prey. Uh, in this case, uh, the mother of his child. Just anger. Sheriff deputies didn't have to go far to find the suspect in this murder. He was still here at the scene of the crime when they arrived. Late in the evening, when it's almost getting dark, that's when they come to this hole. All of them. As far as the eye can see, Nutria have been digging deep through the sides of this neighborhood retention pond, heading straight for this couple's home. You can hear them like grunting and stuff. And then I seen about four of them, I counted, and my neighbor said he's seen six of them. There's power in numbers, and that's just how this invasive species marks its territory. In this case, their presence is so bad, when Clarence LeBlanc steps behind the fence to fish, he has to stay away from the area near the hole, worried it may cave in. You know, sometimes I go out there fishing, I don't want to fall in it, you know, <laughs> and hurt myself. Now, a lot of little kids pass back here on bikes and stuff, and I hate to see one of them fall in the hole, don't know what's there, you know, hurt yourself real bad. The LeBlanc family is not alone in this. Nutria are all over South Louisiana, and they love digging dens beside waterways just like this one. Millions of grains of rice are produced on Louisiana soil every year. It's great. It's fun. I love it. Just west of Baton Rouge, rice farms are working diligently, providing the food we all know and love. It's work, but uh, something that I really enjoy. And of course, uh, it's always said that uh, you got to do something you love uh, uh, so you don't consider it work. Rice is consumed all around the world. And this year, the Louisiana rice industry has its eye on Cuba an island that imports about the same amount of rice Louisiana grows. Which qualifies them to be Cajun, by the way. So, uh, but it, it, they, they eat a lot of rice. But exporting this rice to Cuba has been impossible for the last 56 years. As much time as we spend in traffic in Baton Rouge, you gotta have that AC going. A really hot afternoon, blistering comes to mind. Uh, take a look at the future feels like temperature. Tomorrow afternoon, same thing, feeling 100s. You walk out the door and you feel it. It's mid-June in southern Louisiana, and not only are we feeling the extreme heat. Around the, around coolant hoses, around the water pump. But our cars are too. It gets really hot really fast, and everybody wants that cold air coming out of that vent. Jonathan Bush works on AC in cars. We are slammed to say the least. And with heat the way it is, 
business is sizzling. We went from you know one or two requests for AC service in the course of a week to probably four to eight a day. So if you had a problem before, it can get worse. If you had a small coolant leak, it becomes a, a large coolant leak pretty rapidly. Cooling off your car is important, but so is cooling off yourself. According to LSU officials, the suspect, Bryce Poole, told a male student he had a gun and walked him to the student union. The two then went to an ATM machine where the student withdrew money. After that, Poole made off with the cash. But it wasn't long after that police caught up with him. The lights are up, but several elements are still missing, one being the actual soccer fields. The project was approved more than a year ago, and construction has been moving slowly, leading many to question whether the project will ever come true. Well, Sylvia, the city calls this the largest free festival in the state, and this weekend they're expecting about a quarter of a million people to come out and enjoy the Strawberry Festival and, of course, this great weather. The sunshine, though, wasn't here a month ago. Dark clouds flooded the fields, and lots of the people here today had to struggle to make it.